I, I grew up in a little town called Brentwood, and our stake center was in Stockton, California. Stockton, the largest municipal bankruptcy in the, you know, the history of the United States. But it's a wonderful place. It's interesting, though, to get from Brentwood to uh, Stockton, you have to drive along these levees. Uh, Brentwood's in the San Joaquin Valley. It's one of the most fertile areas in the world. Um, and what happened in the late 1800s is they brought in a bunch of Chinese laborers. And they built up levees around these places. And then they pumped the water out. And because they were, they, they were underwater, the, uh, the land is just some of the most fertile around. It's a little bit interesting. As you're driving down the top of these levees, you'll look to the left, and you'll drop two feet, and you'll see water. And you'll look to the right, and it'll drop eight feet, and you'll see land. So it's kind of a unique thing there, too. So the levees are very narrow. Um, the corners are tight, um, but it's still an interesting thing. And so before I gave my presentation, I shared three stories. One is uh, one of my best friends who played trumpet with me in, in high school. Um, he was going, it was late at night, the fog had come in, and he didn't realize that one of the bridges was out and there was a detour. It's going too fast and we hit it. Story number two is I have a number of friends, too. I don't want you to think that all my friends are weird. But they were driving along the levees, and one of the guys got the idea, wouldn't it be fun just to turn the key off? Wouldn't that make the you know, driver squirm a little bit? And so what did he turn the key off? What happens with cars when you turn the key off? What does it do to the steering? The steering locks up. Luckily, he laid on the brakes, and they still hit uh, hit, hit a telephone pole, but luckily no one was uh, seriously hurt. Story number three is I was driving my dad's F600 truck. I just got back from my mission. So a truck with a 16-foot bed, had a 20-foot trailer behind it, and I had a 7,000-pound forklift on top of that. I was going from one job to the next. They had these bridges over these levees, and what they do is they have rather tight turns. And I thought I was, I thought I was being... Um, <coughs> comfortable. I gave myself plenty of room, and the truck made it around the turn to go over the bridge, but the trailer didn't. And uh, the front tire of the trailer hit the curb on the bridge. These bridges were built in the 20s and 30s, so they were very narrow. Blew the tire, bent the axle, did about $30,000 in, in damage in today's dollars. And remember that all my dad said, Brian, be more careful now. So I did my presentation, and then I tied it back to the story. Story number one is don't drive too fast. Remember the law of harvest. Save what you want, don't borrow for it. Don't go faster than you have resources. Story two, take driving seriously. Take your finances seriously. Make sure you're living on your budget. Watch it daily if necessary. Take the, these things are things that are important. And number three, don't take shortcuts. There are no shortcuts to financial security. There's no get-rich-quick schemes that work. Sacrifice, discipline, and the law of the harvest are all in effect. OK. So today what we're doing is we are finishing up on our retirement planning. We're going to talk about Social Security, and then we'll be adding any sections. Uh, we've already had someone come up and uh, go to ssa.gov and to uh, create an account and look at their Social Security statements. So I encourage each of you to do that. When you hand in your section there, realize you just have to state that I, I looked at my Social Security statement. It's correct. You don't have necessarily have to include it in your PFP. You can if you want. For most of you, uh, your earnings records is, is only a couple of years, so it's not that, not that difficult. So this is how you get a copy of it. Click on Create an Account. You'll agree to the terms of service. And you'll fill in the information. And now you can view or print your statement. I actually like to keep a copy of it on my computer so I can actually see how things have changed. Will, will this change over time? Yeah, every year you will add one more year of data, one more year of earnings to it. And remember, your Social Security benefits are calculated on your top five, 35 years of earnings. So let's start with Social Security. Was it meant to be a retirement plan? No. Social Security came about in some really difficult times. The stock market crashed. The stock market fell 64%. GDP, GDP dropped by almost, uh, almost by half. I, I remember my grandmother telling stories about the hobos that would ride the trains. 
and they would come by and stop at their house in uh, Kimberly, Idaho. And what she would do is she would say, okay, there's a wood pile up the back. You, you chop wood for, you know, half an hour and we'll have dinner for you. And it's interesting, she said some of the people would just walk on to the next house. And other people, they, they would go and they would chop the wood. And then what she'd do is she'd have dinner for them and then she'd have another sack for them to take with them as they go to the next place. But it was not an easy time. It was difficult. 9,000 banks failed. 7 billion in assets. Think about what's, what's inflation been since 1929, so roughly 100 years. So th just think about it. It's not, instead of 7 billion, probably 30 or 40 billion in assets. So it was a tough, it was a tough time. And what it was done, it was, aid, it was set up to aid those out of work. It was set up to ensure that moms could stay at the home and take care of their kids. Realize it was set up at a different time. When it started in 1935, there were 17 workers for every recipient. And what was the average age? How long did people expect to live? You weren't expected to live beyond age 65. Think about it now. Now we are roughly three workers for every recipient. What's the How long are you guys going to live? 85, 90, 95. So realize it was, it was set up at a different time. So let's talk a little bit about how it's structured. How was it set up? How much do you pay? To make two, your AGI is less than 250000 you'll pay a Social Security tax of 6.20. And OASDI is what it's called Old Age Survivors and Disability and Hospital Insurance. Then you've got Medicare tax of 1.45%. But if you make more than 250, it adds 90 basis points there. In addition, it adds 3.8 to your investment tax, too. So the way it's calculated, you've got a maximum here. Once you earn this amount, Social Security is no longer taken on that. So it's only on the amount up to 132.9. And that changes year to year. Um, realize if you're self-employed, you pay double this. So you pay your, your part plus the company part. What are taxes based on? based on all of these things, bonuses, commissions. Even if you put money into a 401k, it's based on those amounts as well. Non-qualified stock options. What's not included, any sick payer, employer payments for medical or hospital expenses, and employer contributions. So it's pretty broad on what it covers. Is your benefit based on those same things? Um, but your benefit is based on, well, we'll yeah, yeah, so the benefit is based on two numbers. It's actually based on three things. The first number is your average index monthly earnings. So what you do, it's your average lifetime earnings adjusted for inflation. So, so each year's earnings are adjusted, are, are inflation adjusted to put that together. Not just so, W-2 earnings? Right, not just W-2 earnings. So it's all, all your earnings. So it includes, it includes your 401k contributions and things like that. So once you get this average index monthly earnings, then you, that's used to determine what's called your primary insurance amount. So your primary insurance amount, this, this specifies if, if basically the amount of your benefit. And realize your primary insurance is split into three different segments <coughs> with a certain percentage and a dollar amount for each segment. <coughs> so we call it bend points because there's two different bend points here. So the way you calculate your primary insurance from your aim is using these bend points. It's 90% of the, of the amount of the first $926, 32% of the earnings from 926 to 5583, and 15% of the earnings over. So for example, if your aim was 5,000 per month, 90% of 926 or 833, 32% of this difference here, which is 4,074 or 13, and then 15% of the amount above, or 2137. So you can see how you calculate your primary insurance amount from your aim. And then, notice how the bend points have changed over time. I have no idea how they came up with this, but it's kind of a unique thing here. And then, what happens is the government is trying to encourage you to defer payments as long as possible. And so what there's a thing they call full retirement age. Full retirement age is when, you're, um, when you can take 100% of your primary insurance amount. 
So full retirement age for, for almost all of you, for all of you is 67. I was born in 1955, so I'm 66 in two months. So at full retirement age, you get your primary insurance amount. Okay, can you, can you take things out? Well, have, have there been changes to it? Yeah. Realize the last time the social security percentage was changed was in 1990, nearly 30 years ago. Is it likely there's gonna be a change going forward? There has to be. Um, and then, how are you entitled to benefits? First of all, if you're fully insured, if you've worked 40 quarters. So realize how simple this is. All you have to do is work 10 years, and you're fully insured. So that's not a bad, bad program. Notice the amount per quarter has changed. Again, it, it increases every year. Again, inflation adjusted here. And realize that Social Security benefits are divided into to four different areas. I handed out, what, what we're most concerned with is, is uh, what we're most concerned is retirement benefits. So let's talk a little bit about that. So they can either be reduced or increased depending on your primary insurance amount, depending on when you decide to retire. So if you retire at full, uh, full retirement age, you get 100% of your primary uh, insurance amount. You can retire up to five years before. But if you do that, three, if you take benefits three years before full retirement age, it will be reduced by 20%. And for each year, up to five years, it will be reduced by another 5%. So realize once you start taking benefits, you can no longer change it. So at 62, which is five years before full retirement age, it, you're 30, you get 30% less of that primary insurance amount. So if they charge you less before full retirement age, do you get benefits if you go beyond? And the answer is yes. Delayed retirement claim. If you delay retirement beyond full retirement age, there's a benefit. And so what they will do is they will increase what you get by 8% a year for each year beyond full retirement age up to three years. Okay, in addition, there's also family benefits. Family benefits, what's the maximum you can, you can get per family? And then uh, spouse's benefit. So if you're married, so example, my wife has a benefit from Social Security, but she gets the option. She can either take half of my Social Security, my PIA, or hers, whichever is larger. And so the, again, back to help make sure my mom's, our people stayed in the home. Okay. Um, so what are the, the benefits? I handed out that sheet. So I encourage you to just take a look at that one here. And if there's some extra copies there. So again, what, what are the retirement benefits? And you can actually see, five years or left, under full retirement age, what can you do? Worker at or over full, full retirement age, spouses, and the age caring for children, and unmade cho unmarried children here. So we talked about each of these, uh, these different areas. Um, and then I give you some notes off to the side. So again, Social Security was never meant to be your entire retirement account. So it actually says that it probably should be like 40%. And for most of you, I think I would make it significantly less. Um, questions from that, from that sheet? Five, five nights of one percent for each month. So if you just remember, um, if you're three years before full retirement age, it's minus thirty percent, or it's minus twenty percent, and then five years is minus thirty percent. And then the nice thing you have to do is eight percent beyond. My wife. So ideally, what you'd look as you put your strategies together, do you think you're going to live longer than age seventy? Um, or you know, eighty. You, you know, you might think about delaying it. You think you're going to live shorter? You know, what you do is probably take it as soon as you can. 
Uh, let me just go through a couple of other things. Just what about some things? What's the amount that's subject to FICA tax? Again, 132.9. If the government wanted to, they could just eliminate that and then make all earnings subject to it. That would bring in additional money into to help out the system. How do you qualify? Again, it's your insured status. To be fully insured, you need to have 40 quarters. You need to work for 10 years. You, you are, um, other things, what does it mean? Uh, to be currently insured, you must have six quarters of coverage in the previous 13 years. And so if you're currently insured, you're, at, you're uh, eligible for survivor benefits, surviving spouse, um, some of the other ones require fully insured status. Um, how much will you get? So remember your benefits are based on your average index monthly earnings. From that you calculate your primary insurance amount and then the, the, then you calculate when do you take those, those benefits. Um, again, our, my strategy, my wife and I, is I will take it at three years beyond full retirement age and my wife will take it at full, full retirement age because I'm three years old. Again, goal is to replace 38 to 40 percent of your income, which is what the Social Security statements said. Um, when do you get it? How do you apply? We, we showed you how to uh, set up a My Social Security account, um, and so you can actually go on and get that as often as you would like. Um, once a year, January 1, there's any cost of living increases for Social Security as well. So realize that there are those benefits there. Um, when will you receive it? General by check or direct deposit. Um, what about additional earnings? So before full, reti full retirement age and before, um, there are penalties if you earn too much money. So your your wages will be reduced for every two dollars in that. Yes. So just, I mean, it's like even further down the road, but just realize that if when somebody does pass away, so if you have a spouse that passes away, uh -huh. they'll keep paying for it if you don't submit it, but they will come back and take that back. Yeah. And so just be careful because you'll probably receive an extra payment and realize you're going to have to, they're going to pull yeah. that back. So you're going to have to like watch that yeah. really close. There's an another, uh, our, our view is to take Social Security as late as possible for, for the higher wage earning spouse. There's another reason why that's a good thing too. So what happens if, when I die, if I, um, took Social Security at full retirement age, which was 67, my wife would either get the higher of mine or hers. And so she would likely take mine. But if I waited to three years beyond full retirement age and then I passed away, she would get that higher amount. So it it's also it encourages you to wait a little bit later. Earned income before age 65, again, there's, there's penalties if you earn too much money. Um, how about federal income tax on benefits? You have to pay taxes on it? Yeah, so there's a thing called provisional income, which is your AGI plus tax exempt income plus a certain percentage of your Social Security benefits. So depending on what your provisional income is, that's how much taxes you'll have to pay. Uh, again, so you've got three categories, low, middle, and upper. So if you're in the low income, none of the benefits are taxable. Middle income, half of it's taxable, and high income, 85% of it's taxable. So it doesn't mean you'll lose 85%, but 85% is subject to your tax. So we talked about if you retired before full retirement age, um, benefits will be one held, one dollar in benefits will be withheld for two dollars in earnings above a certain amount. What are they trying to encourage you not to do? Retire too soon. At full retirement age, or the year you reach full retirement age, will be withheld for every three dollars earnings beyond this amount. <coughs> and then, what do you think? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the future of Social Security? Let me just use some numbers. This is the, the most updated I have, but I, I think we can get some a little bit better ones. This is 2012. They had income of 840 million, paid out 785. You compare that to 2007. Notice Social Security income is growing 1.4%, but expenses are growing 9.7%.
Is that a fun place to position to be in? Yeah. So it's a, it's a tough one. Also realize we're roughly around three uh, workers per beneficiary. And what's happening to the old guys, kind of the, the baby boomers? We're going we're gonna to be all starting to go on Social Security soon. Do you think that will increase the number of recipients? And the answer is yes. So what's the future? Again, 2015, solely from tax revenues. Till 2025, I have to use the bonds and be on 2033. Um, I have to redeem bonds. So again, it was never set up to do what it's doing now. So we've made some adjustments, and so we're going to need to make some, there's some hard decisions that are going to be need, need to be made. What about a worst case, 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 worst case scenario? Again, Social Security, they estimate they'll be able to pay about 77 cents on every dollar. And I think that there's going to be need to make some changes to be made to make sure that it's still, um, that it's still solvent for us. What, what do I recommend? I plan for it. I wouldn't plan for it much, but if it's still available, <laughs> be thankful you use it. You paid into it. And so I'll, I'll get back about one third of what I put into, but that's okay. Um, the point here is it's a, a resource to help people and to uh, help help people here. So based on this, what are your strategies for Social Security? Who took the Social Security said uh, life expectancy? How long do they expect you to live? live? Who did it? The first one. Or the first one. Yours was ninety. Okay, but Jessica, anyone else? I think mine was like eighty-seven. But but we're going to live quite a while. So if Jessica's going to live to ninety. What's her strategy? Is she, is she going to want to take Social Security benefits earlier or later? Probably later. That's why then I had to take that second one. Did you get similar results? Remember the Social Security one is just based on your month, month and year you were born. Um, we have a fun little spreadsheet here which we'll use in a minute that can, can help you. Um, let, me just, let me just share that. So how do you know when you should take it? Would it be nice to have a breaking, break, break even graph? Yeah. Nathan, when were you born? Uh, 1995. Okay, so I'm going to put here 1995. So his additional percentage beyond full retirement age. So Nathan's full retirement age is, is 67. <laughs> So what happens here? So let's say he decides, trying to decide between full retirement age, five years before full retirement age, and full retirement age. And it says if he waits to full right, retirement age, his breaking age is 78. What happens if he waits full retirement age plus three, it's 80. Now, this assumes 0% interest. What happens if, if instead of living on this, you're earning money? So you can make 3%. What does that do? OK, now it's up to 84. What happens if cost of living adjustments is? Now it's, now it's up to 86. Yeah? So can you explain what you mean by break even? Break even is, is when would you be better at waiting versus long? And so what I did is I just put, this, put a table together. I've got data here. Says, okay, here, here is our primary insurance amount. We take that amount, we multiply it by 12 to give us that. So at age 62, if your primary insurance amount was 3,000, you'd get this amount. And then what I did here, I get it. It's a net present value of just all of the, these amounts above. So I just compared my net present value. So four. So four Retirement age minus five, you get 70% of that prime, the PIA here at 75, 80, 86, 93, 100, 108, 106. But notice you have all these years that you didn't get it. So at what point 
would the MPV be higher? And, and that's, um, that's just one way of thinking it. I'm sure there's better ways of thinking about it. I checked it versus a Schwab account and uh, Schwab uh, data there, and so I, I thought it looked pretty good. But, but the nice thing here is now each of you have to figure out what, is, what rate are you going to consume it? If you're going to consume it, you're not going to earn much. But if you're going to invest it, then it's a different story. So the point here is just things to kind of help you, help you think through that. Because each of you have to have a strategy. When are you going to take Social Security? What's the amount of money you're going to take? So what are some st strategies for accumulation on Social Security? Yeah, so continue to work <laughs> and work in, <laughs> work in the natural you know, the economy too, so you're, you're paying taxes on it. Yes? I guess you could appropriately ask for raises because okay. some people don't do that and their employers oh. would be more than happy to. Appropriately ask for raises. Again, remember it's your top 35 years of income. My guess is while you guys are going to school, you're not making much. Um, here, here's just some ideas too. If your health is poor, do you want to take it sooner or later? Probably sooner. <coughs> Continue to work and contribute to the Social Security system as benefits are based on the top 35 years. Got a couple of friends who are not quite in the local economic system. And I, I don't agree with it, but, but they're not. And the downside is when it comes to retirement. Yeah, you, you, didn't, you didn't pay in, but you're not going to get the resources afterwards. Ideally, don't take benefits before full retirement age because there's tax benefits. There's tax penalties. And ideally, the longer you can wait to get it, the, the better off you're going to be. How about retirement strategies? Again, we talked about the higher earning spouse take their retirement as long as possible. Because when that higher earning spouse passes, the other person gets the higher of their amount or the, or the spouse's amount. So if I can wait three years, then my wife will get, a, a, will get more, 24% more, uh, when I pass away. And again, try not to take it before full retirement age. Do they take the average of the top 35 years? Yeah, they take the average. Average index monthly earnings. What does that do? Does that increase the amount or decrease the amount? It decreases the amount. So realize, you know, if your last 10 years is when you had most of the earnings, they're still counting the other 25 years. And so is there incentive to keep working? Yeah, because as you keep working, that will increase it. And then distribution strategies. Again, try to defer it as long as you can. Again, the more you do, again, your benefit is based on not only your average index monthly earnings, but your primary insurance amount, and then when you decide to take those benefits. questions on Social Security. I, I, I think a, a good way is just to do a bunch of problems. Okay. Bill was born in 1940. He'd like to retire and begin receiving benefits at age 68 and six months. His aim is 2007 and PI is 1,200. He knows it will increase by 7% three year beyond FRA up to three years. So what's his, what's his retirement benefit of three years beyond full retirement age? 1,200. So what's his benefit at full retirement age? 1,200. Don't everybody speak at one. What's his benefit? Yeah. Is it at 1,200? 1,200. So if he does it at full retirement age, he'll get 1,200. How much will he get if he goes three years beyond full retirement age? What percent is the year? Does he get a year? Seven percent. So seven times three is twenty-one. One point two one times. Yeah, one thousand four hundred and seventy. Yep. 1,452. 1, Is that not compound? No, it's not compound. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so it's kind of a simple one there. 
So again, here's your 2072. Here's your primary insurance amount. Notice we can look over on this side here. What's your monthly payments? At three years, it'd be 1452. Um, what I've noticed when you do your social security statement, it does not tell you what your average in that monthly earnings are, but what it does is it tells you your amount. Could you back into that? And the answer is yes. So I back into my average index monthly earnings from the spreadsheet. Okay, Steve was born in 60, is thinking about retiring at age 62. So how much would he, his retirement benefits be reduced if he was to begin receiving Social Security at 62? If his AIM was 2072 and PIA was 12, how much would he receive each month? So what's the percentage increase for three years? What's the percentage decrease, I mean? 20% for three years, and what about for the last two years? 5% a year. So what's the total decrease, Tyler? So he'll be receiving 840, so that's... Okay, 840, which is 30% less. 30 less. Okay. So 10% for the first three years, or 20%, 10% the next two, so $840. So you see that again on this, $840 there. So it's, there's a framework in place, Social Security, I, I have no idea how they came up with this, but, it, but it's logical and it's consistent that we can understand it. How about this one? He was born in 55, Anne was born in 58. The plan to, to start taking Social Security when she she's at her full retirement age. And he'll be he'll be on. Assuming Ann's Sam's PIA is 15 and Ann's is 600, how much would each receive? So how much would Sam receive? Fifteen hundred times what? Yeah, 1.24, which is how much? 1860. Yeah, 1860. What's Ann's PIA? How much will Ann receive? So she has the option. She can take the higher of her PIA or half of his. Half of his. So how much is half of his? Yeah, 750. So he would get his 1860, she would get half of his or 750, or they would have 2610 per month. Okay. So is it making sense to get a sense on how we, how we put this together? How about this one? Family maximums. I so the half of the spouses doesn't include the three year Correct. Up. Okay. Right. But if she waited till three years beyond full retirement age, she could also get those same, that same amount. The question is, is it worthwhile for her to wait? Okay. Now, they were married. Steve passed away. He had an AIM, a uh, PIA of 1,200 when he passed away. Now, there's a family maximum. So the way it works on your family maximum, again, so here's your primary insurance amount. Again, those same bend points, but it's 150% of the first 1184, 270% of the 1704, 134% of the 228. So you've got bend points for the family maximum as well. And so based on that, their family maximum would be 1820. Does it depend on how many kids, or just no, it if they leave one kid? They you have one kid. So for example, in this case, they had two kids. The spouse's benefits is seven, 75. Child number one's benefits was also 75%. The other children's benefits, because it's subject to that family maximum. So it, it's not encouraging larger families. Okay. <laughs> but that's, that's the way it's calculated. That's the way they set it up. $20 for them? Right, because the, the maximum is 1820. Okay, so what would, what would she receive? Again, 75%, she'd get 900. Child number two would be 75% here. 
but because she had already received 900, the four children together would only receive the difference after that 920, or that um, rather than 75% per child. Okay. Let's go one more. I actually have five more, but we'll, we'll give you a little bit of a break. So they're both beyond full retirement needs, and they received 11,000 in Social Security benefits in 2019. Their AGI, pensions, wages, interest, and dividends, was 2250. They had 1,500 in tax exempt interest income. So your provisional income is your AGI before Social Security plus tax exempt interest plus half of your Social Security benefits. That's how they calculate your provisional income. So how much of this would they have to pay tax on? So again, there's three different areas here. So you add your, 20, your AGI plus your tax exempt interest plus half of your Social Security benefits. That gives you 2950. So what percent of that? Actually, 32,000 married filing so 2950. So how much of this is taxable? Actually, none of it's taxable. See what the government's trying to do with the policy. I, again, lower incomes, you'll pay less tax. Okay, questions on I, I've still got a number of additional questions, but I'm not sure we're going to add anything to it. But do you get a sense on how Social Security is calculated? Realize that it was set up for a different era. It's set up at a time where the purpose was to keep moms in the homes. It was never really meant to be a sole source of uh, retirement income for people. It's morphed, and like most government policies, they tend to change and they continue to expand. But we're going, we're in an, if we start, it started in an environment where people didn't live past 65, and now we have people expected to live in 90 and 95. It started in an environment where there were 17 workers for each recipient, and now we're down to roughly three workers, three to four workers for each recipient. There's going to have to be some major changes made to make, to to keep it um, to keep it functional because a, a lot of people in my generation we we pay, paid significant amounts um, and so there's a, a lot of encouragement there but it's still it does good and it helps a lot of people so I think we're uh, I think think of it to a degree if you know it's a and the purpose is to help those that have, have, have less. Okay, questions on Social Security? So you guys got it all figured out? <laughs> don't earn too much income. Yeah, don't earn too much income. Okay, let's, let's step back. I, I put together a number of PowerPoints on just questions that people had. Um, but I'd like to, to finish up kind of our section on investing. I added that little article from the Daily Herald on the back of that uh, article. Realize, you know, I love that from Jonathan Clements, 20 no nonsense tips for investing. As I sat with that, that student earlier, as we read through that, he could say, well, I can, you know, as I sat with my advisor before, I didn't know what to look for. I didn't know the cost. He says, you know, I have a much better handle on the cost now. And if you look at those suggestions, you'll see that it's very consistent with kind of the way we teach. You know, cover the things, you know, control the things you can control. You can control costs. You can control taxes. Most important thing, you can control how much you put in. You can control how long you put in. And you can control your risk, risk level based on your asset allocation. So work on the things you can control. What's probably the single most important thing you can do for retirement, prepare for retirement? Save. <clears throat> yeah, save now. Saving that 20%, making sure it's invested wisely, consistent with the things that we've taught. Um, and if you can do that, you can get to, when you get to be old, part of the OGC, the old geezers club like me, um, you're, you're not going to say, well, I wish I would have saved less. Um, you're not going to be concerned about that. But you'll have the resources to do what you need to do. 
The purpose of money is not just to gain our money, it's just to give you the resources so you can accomplish what Heavenly Father would have you do. Is it scary retiring and going on to my next step? Yeah. But is it the right thing to do? And the answer is yes. Because our purpose here is not how much money you make. It's not she who dies with the most clothes wins. It's not he who stands tallest when he stands on this wall with his winner. It's are we accomplishing the thing? Are we becoming like our Savior Jesus Christ in our way of accomplishing it? Okay. Any questions on retirement? Here's just some of the questions. I divided it into five different areas. One is retirement strategies. I gave some tips for 20, 30, 40, and 60. <coughs> Talked about some tax strategies. Have you thought about this? How much can I take out of my tax deferred account and still pay zero, zero dollars tax? Remember what we did is we talked about you want to have a balance with your tax now accounts, which is your brokerage and your mutual fund accounts, tax deferred accounts, which is your 401ks, your traditional IRAs, things, SEP IRAs, simple IRAs, and your tax eliminator, t never taxed accounts, which is your Roth. So, So let's talk about that one. If you want to pay zero, if you only want to pay zero tax, remember the tax, uh, tax system is progressive. So all we need to do is look at our standard deduction, tax limit, 19.4 from the tax table. So anything below that is taxed at 10%. So if I take no tax rate, 24, I can pull out 24400 from my tax deferred accounts and pay zero taxes. If I want to say I want to do it 10%, I can pull out 43800 and pay zero taxes. If I want to do it at 12%, I can pull out 103350 And realize, let's say I want to, I want to part of my tax rate at zero, I pull out 24 four out of this, everything else I pull out of the Roth. Or if I want to target a 10, I get 43 out. Anything beyond that, I pull out of the Roth. So you see how having tax now, tax deferred, and never taxed accounts can help you to manage that tax rate in retirement. Yeah. And if you have itemized deductions, you can probably take it even more. And again, how do we tax? How do we? Manage our tax rates in retirement. You know, offsite investment losses at the end to minimize taxes. Again, low turnover mutual slash index funds with low costs. Again, you only pay taxes when you sell or when you're investment managers. Again, pay your uh, charitable contributions with appreciated stocks. We can use those to rebalance your portfolio. So, being wise. Be, being wise is important. We, we've got the tools. We've got the knowledge. Other questions on retirement that we haven't discussed in class? We're all ready to go home. <laughs> it's OK. Um, there's, there's another three or four. Yeah, it's Tyler. So will we discuss estates at all? Or we will. Is that, um, That's, so uh, next week you'll have uh, you'll have uh, Blake coming in and talking about estate planning and wills, and then it'll also help you all write a holographic will. It's valid in about six states. Most important thing about that is just for you who have kids, it's it's take, making sure you're whoever you have kids in case something happens to you and your spouse, the right person is taking care of your kids. Okay, takeaways. Michael, what are your takeaways for today? Uh, mine was to just uh, depend on or rely on Social Security a lot less than the 40% of the Yeah, rely on Social Security a lot less. Hugh? Yeah, that, that was mine too. I mean, when you said that you, you only get one third of what you pay into it, it's, yeah. it's just not something you should But that's high income people are that. Yeah. Low income, you probably get three times what you paid into it. Oh. <coughs> so, uh, and it's, it's good because they will have more resources to help. <coughs> Derek? 
one was just trying to defer the benefits as long as possible. Yeah. So you can maximize the monthly. Okay. Yeah. That was the same thing. Basically, don't rely on Social Security and put it off as long as possible. Okay. Ethan. Same type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we talked about like making sure that you're working. Through yeah, make sure you're working. Just top 35 years at higher amounts. Yeah. So here's my takeaways. Is we're responsible for retirement. It's up to us. You know, you need to plan well. Because no one will no one will take that responsibility from you. And don't expect the government to do it or do it well. Number two, just as we need to take driving seriously, we need to take our finances. We need to take retirement planning seriously. You need to realize that if you don't do it, it won't happen. So set a plan, follow through, and follow through with the things that you can do. The single most important thing you can do is save that 20% and invest it wisely. Number three, just as with driving, don't take shortcuts in your retirement. There are no get-rich-quick schemes that work. You can't spend yourself into financial security. Sacrifice, discipline, and the law of the harvest are still in effect. Okay, thanks everyone. Appreciate you coming.